In this video, we are going to look into the fundamental differences between Fourier series and Fourier transform. And we would achieve that by means of a visual inspection. So let us start with Fourier series and, and specifically we are having a synthesis expression. That is x of t, this is equivalent to weighted sum of complex exponentials. So this is the weights or the coefficients and they are being multiplied with complex exponentials which is for synthesis e raised to power plus j k omega naught t. Omega naught is the angular frequency in radians per second and k is an integer variable dealing with harmonics. So k would start from minus infinity to infinity. So this complex exponential, this signal can be broken down by means of Euler's identity into a cos of this argument that is k omega naught t plus j times sine of this argument again that is sine k omega naught t. The cos function is 1 at time instant 0 and it is oscillating with respect to the fundamental angular frequency that is omega naught. So it is oscillating between plus 1 and minus 1. In the meanwhile, the sine function is having a value of 0 and it is oscillating between plus 1 and minus 1 as well. Now, Fourier series was valid for periodic signals. So, say x of t is periodic. It can be any periodic signal uh, for the time being. Let us take the example of full wave rectified signal. So, the Fourier series suggests that x of t can be broken down into simpler complex exponentials which are weighted by coefficient a k. So let us proceed to that. Say in this summation we set the variable k equal to 0. So if we set the variable k equal to 0, cos function of 0, cos of 0 is simply 1 at this point. At the same time sine of 0 is 0. So at k equal to 0, we simply have this function resulting in a value which is a 1. So with respect to time, we have a value which is simply a constant DC value that is a value of 1. But at the same time, this is multiplied with an A0 over here or A0 over here. So this is now multiplied with A0. So therefore, in the magnitude response, that is with respect to frequency omega, x of j omega at k equal to 0 has a magnitude which is the absolute value of a0. That is, you would have an absolute value of a0. So this is dc value. And a0 is simply the average of x of t, that is this signal. Next, let us take the first harmonic, that is when we set k equal to 1. So if we set k equal to 1, and again we have the time plot t. So in this case now, if we set k equal to 1 over here in the cos function and also in the sine function, let us just plot the real part of this function for the time being. So in this case we have a sinusoid which is oscillating with respect to the fundamental frequency omega naught. So we would have a signal which is sinusoid and this is cos of omega naught t. And this would be multiplied with the coefficient that is now a1. So this would be multiplied with a1. So therefore in the magnitude spectra at k1 we would have a magnitude which is simply the absolute value of 
K1. So also at K1, this is simply our omega naught. Next, again, if we set K equal to 2, that is, we would have this K now set to 2. So in that case, the time plot would be similar to this time plot, but it would be oscillating at twice the frequency. So until here, now we would have two oscillations rather than one oscillation for k equal to one. So we would have two oscillations. And this would be multiplied by A2. So this would be our second harmonic. And over here we would have a magnitude at A2. Similarly at k minus one, that is k equal to minus one. Cos function again is an even function, so cos of minus omega naught t is equal to cos of omega naught t. So you would again have this plot reappearing over here. So this would be multiplied by a minus one. So this magnitude now would be a minus one. And similarly, we would have at k equal to minus 2 magnitude, which is a minus 2. On this side, we would have the harmonics, so we can have an infinite harmonics to the positive side and also to the negative side. But eventually, we're going to sum them up. So we have a summation expression. So if we sum them up, that is, we sum all of these values. So this summation would result in the time domain signal, which is x of t. So the periodic signal is represented in terms of the time domain composite plot. This can also be represented again in the time plots, which are until here. That is pure sinusoids, which are having the amplitude that is A2, and for this we would have A1 and so on. So again, these are the time plots, and we also have an alternate representation, which is in terms of the frequency and the magnitude response. But what happens if the signal is not periodic, and we are having an aperiodic signal? For example, our voice, which is having different amplitudes, at different instants of time, most of the time the signal would be at low amplitude, and seldom it would go to high amplitude. But anyways, this is now our time plot, that is t. So since it is not periodic, we cannot take the Fourier series of this signal. But if this signal fulfills the Dirichlet conditions, that is, it is it is absolutely integrable and it fulfills the other conditions, then we can take the Fourier transform of it, which is x of j omega, and this is simply an integration from minus infinity to infinity. Say this is our new signal, that is x of t, so we have x of t e, e minus j omega t dt. So we have a minus sign for this analysis expression. We are moving from time domain to frequency domain. So the idea over here is very similar to the one that we have achieved in the Fourier series. Let me explain how it is similar. So initially, we were having a time period t naught, and the signal was repeating after that time period. And from here, we had omega naught, which is simply 2 pi by t naught. So this omega naught was 2 pi by t naught over here, and this at this point, this was 4 pi by t naught and onwards. That is, in the magnitude response, we were having values at the increments of omega naught. 
but probably this signal is not periodic. So in our analysis, say we set a time period which starts at minus infinity and it terminates at infinity. So this covers the total span of this signal, that is the total possible span, and we say this is our T naught. And after this interval, now the signal repeats itself, which is a theoretical concept one. So we can say that the time period for this aperiodic kind of a signal is infinity. That is, it is repeating itself after infinity. So in this case, our mega naught would be equal to limit t naught times to infinity 2 pi by t naught. So this would be almost approaching zero because t naught is infinity. So what does this mean visually? Again, the exponential signal, we break it down into cos omega t. Now because of this minus sign over here, we would have a minus here j sine omega t. Now this exponential would be multiplied with this signal. That is, we need to multiply these two together for a given value of frequency and then eventually we are integrating the overall signal. So again, say we have a magnitude response w and we are interested in the value 0. That is when omega is equal to 0. So in that case, the time plot again would be cos of 0 which is 1 and sin of 0 is simply 0. So we have a value of 1. And this value of 1 would be multiplied with x of t based on this expression over here. So if you multiply this signal with original x of t, so you would again have x of t by itself. And this also appears over here, that is if you set omega equal to 0, so this exponential would simply become a 1 and you would have an integration minus infinity to infinity x of t dt. That is, you are finding the area of x of t. So, this serves as our DC value, and this DC value has this magnitude. So, this is the magnitude of x of omega. So, this is exactly similar as in the Fourier series, that when k was equal to 0, so at this point, we had DC value, and now again we have a DC value. So next we have omega naught and in the Fourier series this omega naught was stationed at 2 pi by t naught. But right now our omega naught is dependent on t naught and t naught is actually approaching infinity. So omega naught is approaching zero. So if originally omega naught was over here, now it is almost collapsing to zero. So say we have a value of over here we, were, we had omega equal to 0, now we have omega equal to 0 plus, just after 0. And we have some sort of a wave. And this wave would be multiplied with the original signal. And then again you will find the area by means of integration. So this would give us a new magnitude. And similarly, if we continue to grow, we would have a continuous kind of a spectrum. So this would not be our new omega naught, but now we would have a continuous plot. So we would have a value at x of omega at each point of omega. And since this is a real function, so for real function, the magnitude plot is symmetric. So we have the same shape on the other side. That is, we would have uh, omega equal to 0 minus and onward. So therefore, our 
Fourier transform is x of omega, which is minus infinity to infinity x of t e minus j omega t dt. That we had in the magnitude response x is with respect to omega. But if we move towards a generalization that is a Laplace transform, so this Laplace transform is having a form x of s, which again is minus infinity to infinity x of t e minus s t dt. And s is having the real part which is sigma and then it is having the complex part that is j omega. So therefore x of s is minus infinity to infinity x of t e minus sigma t e minus j omega t dt. That is the last transform is nothing but a Fourier transform of the signal x of t multiplied by an exponential to the power of minus sigma t. And why we need it? Because if this signal was not converging, if a signal is not converging, that is if this is not converging by itself, so what we do is we multiply it with e h to the minus sigma t and we set this sigma in such a way that this signal converges and that is the total of the class transform.